What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. As you know, we've been doing a weekly thing of trying to react to Webby's press conferences and we'll try and react to maybe a couple of more things in the future and all that. So I do hope you guys enjoy the content we are sort of bringing into this channel right now. Me and Levon trying to, you know, move the needle a little bit here. But we got a massive video here today. Obviously, you know, Andrew Webster has jumped onto SEN uh, Z. Uh, which is, you know, obviously SEN in Australia. There's SENZ in New Zealand. If you guys haven't gone check them out, go check them out on YouTube and Spotify and all the little platforms that you can get them on because they do amazing things with sports talk. It's not just rugby league. It's not just Warriors. It's on, you know, Union and all that, especially SENZ. Uh, got a really good show at the Union team and stuff like that. And a couple of really uh, familiar faces here. Obviously, you know, on the running it straight uh, sort of panel here, we got Sammy Hewitt, who is currently on our show uh, a couple of weeks back. You know, I think it was before the Dragons game uh, or after the Dragons game. He was incredible, an amazing person. I cannot wait to see, like, you know, the future of us collabing a little bit more and stuff like that. And also Anthony Jelling, you know, uh, an ex-warrior and all that. Uh, I used to love Anthony Jelling as a player and that. So it was really good to see these guys get the opportunity to talk with Webby with all the community questions and stuff. So today, I'm just going to run through them quickly, uh, have my little reaction of it. Hope you guys enjoy. Please also, guys, just make sure that you go over to SENZ, uh, like their channel, subscribe and all that, and go check out the full video here of Run It Straight, because Running It Straight is an amazing little thing that they got going on in uh, SENZ with Sam Hewitt and Anthony Jelling. They go through the footy and how the Warriors are tracking, so amazing to go check it out through there. So without further ado, let's get through Webby's little interview on SENZ. 12 minutes away from three here on Running It Straight, Sammy alongside uh, Anthony Gelling, and we can welcome into the show Warriors head coach uh, Andrew Webster who is on the line now. Webby, welcome in. Welcome. Thank you for having me, guys. Nah, it's great to have you on, mate. Look, there's uh, there's a lot of noise um, around at the moment, mate, from from everyone, from media, probably Jello, a lot of it as well, as well as our uh, <laughs> as well as our listeners. Just from your point of view, Webby, how are you assessing things after uh, after nine rounds? Mate, we're not. It's pretty obvious we're not where we want to be. Um, we're, you know, we're we're not doing it the way we we know we can. Um, they're still confident that we we will get there. Um, yeah, each week, each week it doesn't happen. It gets more frustrating. I think for the fans, the players, the coaches. Um, but you know they're they're trying really hard. I think the the biggest thing for us is just putting so much pressure on ourselves with our discipline, uh, our errors, penalties. Um, just creating so much fatigue for ourselves at the moment. And yeah, we've got to we got to get uh, we've we've obviously addressed it. We address it every week, but. Um, we've also spoken about it the last three weeks, so we, we've got to uh, um, we've got to draw a line in the sand, and it's got to be this week. So, what I get out of that first little talk there from Webby is he does seem he's so cruisy as a character and stuff like that. But like, there is a couple of big words here, as in like we must get it done this week. Um, you know, the uh, like we're trying to get on top of things, frustrating like words like that is showing that he is showing the same level of frustration. He knows what this group can do. Uh, maybe, you know, we'll touch on a little bit later on, on, you know, the, the systems in play, maybe there's some things he can tinker with and maybe he can change a little bit on that, but, um, just good to hear. Obviously our coach has like picked up on that. I know, you know, he's picked up on it in the last couple of weeks and that we do want to see it now. Uh, but you know, obviously he can see very similar things as well as a head coach will. He has a lot more deeper knowledge of what is going on with the boys right now than what we do currently, but um, it's just also really just good to hear like it's just a smooth talking coach that just understands and he just will he knows the the level that we can get to and I think the big key thing out there too was the boys know that they're not at that level yet and they know they can get a lot better so uh, there is a higher potential with this squad and it's just not hitting the level at the moment so it's good to see him touch on that a little bit yeah he, um what's the talking about this week what's been what's been the focus um you know I know time time is limited out there on the training paddock. Um, is there a priority or a focus? Is it offensive or defensive? What what kind of has that priority at the moment? Yeah, it's not. It's not, in attack. It's pretty simple. We just want to commit to what we want to do. We want to do it at speed and conviction. Uh, I just want to pause on that because I think that's a that's a really good one straight away. Like he wants to see more conviction. More we need to if we're going to run our game plan, we got to run it with the full effort and energy that we are so good at and i feel like that's something we've lost currently right now so i just wanted to point that out quickly like that that those words there are good to hear obviously that webby's understanding that these boys are just going through the motions a little bit at the moment and we're all kind of seeing it so it's good to hear and actually enjoy it and have fun and be confident around ourselves um defense we want to get our identity back i thought mm. I thought we defended our, uh, even though we had a lot of um, penalties and errors last week, I thought we defended them for long periods of time a lot better. I mean, they scored two tries off a grubber and a, basically a little 
uh, an inside shoulder off the back of three sets from our line. So we want to keep that. But um, we want we want teams kicking from their own end more. Um, that's what we're really good at. We kick in the corners. We put pressure on with our defence and they can kick from their end. So we haven't just gone defence attack. We've gone both because in the NRL, you've got to be good at both. And uh, yeah, we're not, we're not there at the moment. Um, quick one. I don't want to keep stopping it all the way through because I want you guys to hear this, this sort of stuff too. But I think... It was also really good to see that he's picking up on things, but it's like, you know, what Webby's good at is he shows the boys what they do good as well and understand, like, I think that's a positive culture to really bring into a club. Like, we could have a coach that comes in and just bags the boys out for everything, and a lot of the culture, you know, the people in, like, the club and that would probably take that the wrong way and stuff, and when you uh, have a coach that goes in there and says, like, you know, these are the moments that we do good, so we want to keep this in our performance, guys, so don't you know, uh, jump onto one other thing and neglect that thing now. Like, we've got to do both of that. So that's, that's a really good thing to hear, obviously, from Webby. Talk about that, that, defen- that defensive identity. Who kind of leads, leads the charge for that? Like, if you were to single out a player in the team right now and think, if everybody tackled like this guy, we're going to go places. Who's that? Who, who would you kind of look to as an example for that, that identity? Uh, the identity on our kick chase, um, Rocco, Berry and Dallin, for one, um, they, they give us that because they, they chase down there with such speed. But Mitch Barnett, for mm-hmm. me, the way he defends and the way he goes after the opposition, the way he tackles. Um, if we had 13 guys tackling like that at the moment, we'd, we'd certainly be in a better situation. So, um, yeah, he, he'd be the one. I mean, there's others. It's not all bad. Um, we're, we're closer than... We could be closer than we think. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, Mitch Barnett, he, he leads that certainly with our pack. Mm. We, be, um, we were talking earlier in the show um, around uh, some sort of data and stats analysis that sort of suggests that um, despite the, the recent uh, few losses, the team still sits you know, at the top of the comp for things like run metres and set completion. It seems like the, a lot of the pieces are there, but particularly when, you, when we're getting into the last 20 metres, um, you know, into that red zone, it just seems like um, the, the potency or the ruthlessness isn't quite there. It, have you been able to, I guess, pinpoint it? Are you able to share it with us? Or or is it just something that you're just constantly having to work on? Oh no, I think it's, I think you're right. Like um, before we get into this quickly, amazing question, Sammy. The way he sums everything up, just amazing. Uh, obviously, this is a question we all want to hear at the moment. Is like, what's his thoughts around our attack, especially in the opposite twenty? It's just so clear for us that you know that comes back to that conviction of our plays and actually running that every play for that play mm. rather than waiting. That's exactly it. Um, what I mean by that is. You know, let's say we're getting to our points, we're just a bit one out, we don't have that same conviction. And then mm. our time in execution just isn't where it needs to be. And, and when we're at our that's best, a big that's one. what we're really good at. So, like, we're giving ourselves plenty of opportunities down there. The, the thing I will say is we're losing big chunks of possession, and then we get lots of, then we get lots of possession at the end of the game. And mm. we're, we're throwing out. We're throwing shots at the opposition. I think we had, like, 12 minutes to go. I think we were way behind the possession count and we ended up winning the possession count by the end of the game. But those mm. those um, options and um, good ball attacking sets we're throwing at them are just so lethargic and slow and soft. Um, and there's no conviction to them because our energies are low. So uh, there's definitely a, a timing issue, but I'd love to see how good our attack could be if we had a bit more energy. This is a really good point here. And I think this is a, a lot of what maybe the reason is to why when we're running our sets out at the moment too, like I do think it's a, it comes down to combinations and stuff. Our combinations are there, but the whole thing of what we'll be saying that overall we are we have our you know moments in our like you know I think the Titans game we had a good stack of possession to start and then it completely fell away to the Titans and the Titans started to turn possession in their way and I think they went into halftime with more uh, possession overall. Um, and then, like, you know, the same similar thing with the Dragons game. We had that middle block there where possession just flipped on its head. And then we end up getting the later end of the possession at the end of the game trying to chase our own tail. And a lot of boys, I think that's where it becomes very frustrating to watch as us as fans too, is maybe they aren't running the same sort of plays and that on with the same conviction. is because the boys have done a ton of work for that middle part of the game to change momentum back. And I think Rugby League these days is such a momentum-based game and it's so tough to wrangle momentum back. And... I think this is a really good point that Webby's putting in here that maybe, you know, the boys have got to stay in control for a longer periods. And maybe there's, for me, there's a big thing of like, you know, before halftime, 10 minutes before halftime, 10 minutes after halftime is some of the most important parts of the game is, 
you know, between that middle block of the game, if you can wrestle back momentum and really carry that over, it can really set you up to finish the game really well. And uh, maybe Webby's just trying to get the balance of that at the moment. And the boys are just trying to get the balance of that at the moment. Do you think, um, Webby, as well, that this always gets floated around, and, and I'm not personally a, a big um, a prescriber to this, but people saying that, you know, teams have learnt um, the Warriors from last year to this year. You know, they know how to deal with the moves out towards the right side. Is that something that you guys feel is having teams are a little bit more aware of what you're capable a big of question. attack, and that's a reason why it's getting shut down? Yeah, no, they are, mate. There is, there's definitely parts of it. I mean, the thing for me, if we walked off and we, everyone timed it well and we ran it the way we wanted to run, and they stopped it, and mm. we'd have to address some things. I mean, what I mean by that is we'd have to have some variations and something different, which we're all for. But the thing is, we're not getting that timing and that conviction right, and we probably are one a bit one sided mm. the way we attack at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, like the the thing for last year, they all knew it was coming, but we ran it so well. Yeah. Um, even times this year, we've ran it so well, it's it's so bloody hard to stop. So what we ask ourselves is each week we come off, did we run it the way we want to run it? And if they stop it, then, yeah, we've got to make some adjustments. But uh, if we don't do it the way we want to do it, then that's going to be our main focus, getting getting back to the way we do. That's a big one too. Obviously, he said the word that we will kind of want to hear is uh, variability, you know, in the middle of that. So um, also what I took out of that as well is Maybe more so as a fan, if I, I think I got to sit back a little bit too. And I think a lot of us maybe do got to sit back and understand how long it actually takes to maybe, um, you know, when we're doing a similar thing that works for so long, how long it actually takes for us to maybe add something on top of that, especially with the group that we've had. We've had changes in spots f uh, for multiple times this year. Um, and the amount of times that Shawnee's getting to train with the squad, I think it might be very tough sometimes to really switch up uh, and work different players that we aren't used to yet. Like, you know, we've had a full preseason of probably expecting to come into the season for that right side to really open up and um, finding out mid, not mid, but like, you know, early on, like halfway towards that mid part of the season um, that teams are starting to figure us out. And then we haven't had the full like team on the park to really work or something else, you know what I mean? And maybe it's taking a little bit longer than expected to put a different ver a variable into our attack and run that left side as more so. So uh, maybe that could be the case as well. Um, but also, you know, you could take it the other way too. If you listen to the end of this, obviously we'll be saying that, you know, when we run that attack and we run it well, it is, it is unstoppable. It's just, you know, we got to get back to that running that hard and running that with conviction. Um, that's another thing I definitely caught out of that too. And you could take that two ways is like, is Webby just going to continue to keep banging his head against the wall here? Or is he going to throw up different uh, variables and that? So, uh, really interesting thought there. We got a lot of um, questions that have flooded in when we said we were getting you on, Webby, and uh, and some of them, well, a lot of them um, revolving around um, that execution and that final third. And um, a lot of people asking, how do we unlock the left side? We know what the right side's capable of. We saw mm, that last year. It's a big year. one. We know, um, you know, Dallin um, getting the record Thank for you, the Sammy. tries for the Warriors. But people want to know, how does that left side, um, how do we unlock it? We know Roger's out there as well, and we're all excited to see Roger and, and what he's capable of. But it just feels like at the moment, it's, it's not quite clicking. Can you put your finger on that one? No, no, we're, 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 we're very right dominated. We've got to be, we've got to be more open minded both sides of the field. We're, like, I mean, that's acknowledgement. That's good. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into the, the real technical detail and tell the roosters how we're going to play this week, but yeah, we've definitely got to be more open minded. Hiding something. Field so we can lock, lock, um, be a threat on both sides. I mean, our big thing we've always wanted to be is two points of attack, meaning if they number up that way, we can go this way. If they number up that way, then we can go the other way. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, it's, it's a good observation that very uh, right side of dominant at the moment. And we need to be more balanced. Hey, um, hey, we that's that's a big one. That's a big one. Obviously, it's the the acknowledgement is a big thing. If you know just humans and that, if you acknowledge something, you understand that it's out there. You put that in the ether. Now it's up to you to change that, and we're ready to see it this weekend. It's good to see that. Obviously, he doesn't want to say too much. Obviously, before the Roosters game, gives me a little bit of vibe of like. Is there something coming that we don't know? Like, you know, there was the Roosters game last year that Tomate Martin broke his leg in, um, that we had a lot of that left side variation as well, as Levon kind of touched on in our last live stream, that outside inside play for Wade Egan and that we ran a lot of that sort of set. So maybe is there something coming? I don't know. But um, just good to see him acknowledging these sort of things as well. At the bench for this week. So when, when the decisions get made around who's on the interchange, are we picking the best team possible or are we kind of tweaking things to the opposition that we're playing? No, we want to pick our best 
I want to pick our best 17 um, that deserve to play and that will give us the best opportunity to win. Um, yeah, we take mm. opposition into account. We might tactically start someone that we normally wouldn't because they'd suit that particular opposition. Mm. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, you want your best 17 out there. And um, Sometimes it's like your bench has decided, well, do I need a utility player on the bench? No, I've got him playing this week, so I don't need it. Mm. Um, but mm. majority of the 16 should pick themselves. You know what I mean? Um, Because they're the best 16 you want. And then your 17th man is often a utility guy or something that you need in that scenario that week. Yeah, yeah. Um, As far as some of these young guys that are coming through, you know, there's some real exciting uh, talent um, that's almost, almost coming through. So we've got Ali Laotawa, guys like Zion Maui. We had a little taste of him on Anzac Day. Um, People love to see him. For you as a coach, what kind of tells you that that a young guy is ready to go, ready to be picked? Uh, Yeah, I think we had Jacob Laban as well. He did a great job. I just think the way they train, um, are they reliable? The way they play in New South Wales Cup, um, you know, that, that, that tells me they're ready. Mm. Um, we also haven't talked about all the injuries, Webby, and it seems like the casualty ward is, a, is a, in constant flux going up and then coming back down and going up again. So that's something you've got to manage. Um, another uh, sort of question that was quite common with the text, uh, the text machine was, um, and it's not just last week with, with Adam Pompey, but I guess the, the decision-making around mm, almost Sammy, the 17th love it. Um, position and whether or not you're picking for injury cover or whether you're picking someone seeing a role for them just quickly, before we go through this, this is kind of the best thing about having this sort of look as well. So um, of actually Sammy and these boys that are, are Warriors fans so they understand the community, uh, what we kind of want to hear. When you go to these official press conferences, like they say what the media sort of is like, you know, the way to talk about it. But these guys are really good at giving the community, like, you know, the way people are thinking. But this is a great question that we all want to hear at the moment, obviously. Over the 80 minutes. Can you enlighten us a little bit there or are you trying not to give too much away? No, no, no. I can, I can go in that one. Like, that, that's what I just was trying to say. Like, you pick your sixteen, and then, and then, um, if you've got too many forwards, like you've got enough forwards, for example, and then you look and say, okay, if we've got an injury to an outside back, who on their bench can cover that mm-hmm. role? Um, and we didn't. You don't feel like you've got anyone, so then you pick a guy like Adam Pompey, and you say to Adam Pompey for the game, listen, brother, I don't. You might not go on there today, unfortunately, because um, our middle's rotation, our forwards rotation, will take care of itself. But if we get an injury to an outside back, mate, we're, we're going to put you on. So um, you, you just got to make sure you've got every single thing covered each week. Like when Kirk Capewell and, and Dylan, like, it, like if Dylan Walker's back playing, he can give you that versatility. So sometimes mm. it depends on the situation. And um, yeah, unfortunately, um, Adam Poppy didn't get any minutes last week. I don't want to leave that point too long because it sort of sounds like that Dylan Walker's still not fully fit yet. And he's just get, trying to get his legs under him. So maybe that's another option why we're carrying Adam Pompey on the bench. Maybe when Dylan Walker's a bit more fresher and he's got some fitness under him, maybe we'll drop out that you know that part and really bring another forward on our bench. That's the way I took that there. Um, it was kind of like, you know, it does also seem like he ca- he counts his 1-16. to 16, So he has his main 1-16 to 16 overall. And then that last spot is up for grabs, really. For me, that's what it sounds like. So it's really uh, on, you know, who he's playing with and all that sort of stuff. And... Again, it just sounds like that maybe we got a couple of players that are playing a little bit underwhelmed, like underfit, underdone a little bit. When Walker gets back to fit, maybe he becomes more of that versatility beast and we we don't see Pompey on the bench of that. So. Well, Webby, um, it's been awesome having you on, mate. I know you're a busy man. Um, lots to prepare for as well this Sunday. So we, uh, we really Amazing. appreciate the time, mate. Go well against the Roosters and uh, and hopefully we'll uh, catch up again soon. No, thanks for having us. And uh, look, I appreciate all the support. And we're, trust me, we're, we're, we're trying hard. We want to win and... Uh, Hopefully we get it for everyone this week. No, nah, we, we know that, Webby, and we're behind you 100%. Andrew Webster there, um, the Warriors. We are behind him. Coaching. Let's go. Yeah, so I just want to end it off there. Obviously, guys, uh, if you want to go check out the full video and all that sort of stuff, I might have edited a couple of things out here, but you go watch the full thing. SEN, run it straight. I don't want to take too much away from SEN here, but you know, I want you guys to go check them out because they're incredible for what they do. Uh, thank you so much to Sammy and all that uh, legit asking the proper questions we kind of do want to hear as well. And shout out to Webby actually answering these questions as well. You know, a lot of coaches could have just gone a long way around it but he was actually pretty straight up about a lot of things here obviously holding a little bit back obviously coming up with the roosters game and not giving away too much of our game plan and that but i think this was really really good to hear really really good to see i'm still very positive on our coach i still think he's the coach that we need and the coach that we want i think he can be the long-term coach for our club i think there's a lot of things i'm taking out of this is more so number one that i feel like the boys maybe are still a little bit underdone 
I think that, um, you know, a lot of boys dealing with a little bit of niggle, a little bit of things that's not getting our combinations and all that in order. Um, we're getting a bit of fatigue in the game because we are losing a, lo- a little bit of our possession battle, which is our main game plan that we want to play. Um, but also good to hear that he's acknowledging that the left side needs a lot of work and he wants to work towards it and obviously maybe holding something to the Roosters game. So maybe we see something this Roosters game. We'd love to see that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today. Please make sure you comment down below your thoughts overall. Like what'd you get out of this conversation here overall that I've sort of missed out on? Um, I'd love to hear it in a comment section down below, but make sure you go like and subscribe to SENZ, uh, you know, the radio and all that on YouTube and on Spotify. Go check them out on Spotify, running it straight. Sammy Hewitt and Anthony Jelling, amazing show. And it's so good to see that they like legit ask all the questions we want to hear. So appreciate every single one of you guys. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and a lot more for the future. I'm getting ready for my live stream, the Wednesday show around the league with Ash. So go check that out, guys, if you haven't got checked it out already. But appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Let's go.